What is up, players? Warboss Tay up in this mud doing a little bit of a audio log podcast reviewing the first two episodes of WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. WandaVision uses the characters Wanda Maximoff and Vision from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and places them in a completely new setting, a 1950s and 60s household with uh, sets and props and other actors that are pretty much trying to encapsulate the aesthetic of television shows like I Love Lucy and Dick v the Dick Van Dyke show and uh, episode two definitely bewitched there is so much charm on screen and uh, my spoiler free review is if you haven't seen it it's definitely worth watching I think if you're a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan it's definitely something you want to see don't skip it and uh, don't think for a second that because it's not big sets and CGI fight scenes like the new Loki show looks like it's going to be. Don't think that it because it's not that, because it's just a small little weird looking concept that it's a black and white show. Don't think that that has anything against it. Don't hold it against it. Just go in with an open mind. I think you'll be very, very charmed and you'll be pleasantly surprised just like we were. We had no idea what to expect. Go in knowing nothing. If you haven't seen it yet, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review from after uh, the this beginning summary. So if you haven't seen it, you're thinking about it, definitely check it out. Very charming. Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany are really great in their respective roles. Completely different, too, from what you know them as in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's almost like they're playing different characters that are just wearing the same costumes and makeup as Vision and just like have the same powers that uh, the Scarlet Witch had in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's not even the same powers because she's not using her magic the way she does in the movies with the big hand gestures and everything. She's She basically like does a Samantha from Bewitched. She like spins her finger or she does a little thing with her head and something magically happens. It's, it's ridiculous, it's charming. It's very engaging. The acting is terrific. The writing, I think the writing is okay. I, I haven't been blown away with it. The directing is spot on. The uh, aesthetic of the the Dick Van Dyke show, the I Love Lucy in the first episode, all the way down to, this is not a spoiler, but the, the way they end the show where the closing credits, the camera zooms in on the couple as they're smiling and looking wistfully up into the air and you can see, it. you almost imagine like a little heart around their faces. It's so cute and adorable and charming and I can't talk about it highly enough. So check it out. And uh, from here on, the spoilers will begin. So episode one seems to take a lot of its cues, like I said, from I Love Lucy in the end of the, the episode. And in the beginning of the episode, it looks like they're just moving from the big city, the opening credits say, and uh, she's in her wedding dress and he's carrying her over the threshold. It's so ridiculous because the whole time he's got his vision makeup when he's at home with her. And then he puts on his human disguise when he goes out to work and has to interact with other people. It's also a great way for Vision to be uh, to be able to not have his makeup on all the time. I'm sure Paul Bettany doesn't want to do Vision makeup in everything. So seeing him as human uh, Vision, the human disguise, as kind of dweeby, uh, a socially awkward character is, uh, is, an, is a pleasant change. And it's nice to see him be able to act without having all that vision makeup on it also would also look really weird if when he was out in public he had his vision face and <laughs> his vision makeup on okay so uh i love the aesthetic i think it's great and you know this is supposed to be the spoiler part of the podcast but i don't really have anything spoilery i wanted to talk about except i think that the agnes character the neighbor character has something to do with the comics is I think Agnes is a named character in the comics Catherine Hahn does a delightful job I think she's really good and uh, she also knows how to play big with the smile and the the squinty eyed sm big, big toothy smile and the delivery of the 1950s housewife it's so I love Lucy and it's so Nick at night that it really watching this show brings me back to my childhood watching Nick at night on Saturdays and seeing I love Lucy and episodes of, of the Dick Van Dyke show so the one spoilery thing I want to talk about is when the illusion of the show 
kind of starts to crack. In the dinner party scene, uh, Vision's boss and his wife come over to have a dinner party at their house. And uh, in the middle of it, Vision's boss starts choking on a piece of food. And uh, it, it's almost played for a laugh at the beginning. His wife is like saying, stop it, like really jokingly. And uh, Vision and Wanda are kind of looking at each other. And then the boss keeps choking. And then the wife keeps repeating, stop it over and over and over. And then it starts to get a little creepy, a little Twilight zone -y. And that's what I love about this show. And I wish it would have a little bit more of that. But right off the bat to kind of unnerve you and throw you off and make you wonder what's really happening behind the scenes. And uh, and then when when it kind of resolves itself, we're left wondering, oh, that's kind of weird. What's going on? The mystery of the show, I'm not even sure how many episodes this show is supposed to have in this season. But the mystery of the show is that we want to wonder what's going on, but we have to be... Uh, we have to be carried along in the narrative that we have to believe that all these crazy situations is actually happening when we know it's not because we know these are characters that exist in the present. We know that even with the laugh track, there's a laugh track for crying out loud, that there's uh, something going on behind the scenes and we're wondering what it is. And uh, the whole premise of the show is really great when it can sprinkle in these moments of mystery and when the entire episode is played for laughs like a Nick at Night show then uh, like a cheesy 50 sitcom then when you have these moments of weirdness and cre almost creepiness then uh, it really works in its favor so that's it I love the show I think it's great and uh, I would highly recommend it I wonder see the, the balancing point of the show is that we don't know if they realize that they're in a TV show at this point, I don't think it's very clear. And I'm trying to keep myself spoiler. <laughs> it's funny because the spoiler part of the review, but I'm trying to keep myself spoiler free by not watching too much of the uh, future episode content. I actually think Disney Plus did a disservice to itself because they show their hand by showing what happens in the future episodes when they show the world turning to color and moving into the 70s with the costumes and the characters uh, changing their looks. I think if Disney Plus had really stuck to the 50s show in their promos and just had everybody wondering, what the heck is going on with this show? Why are they doing a 1950s sitcom? I think the later reveals that the world actually turns into color and it looks like they go into a, a Brady Bunch type looking 70s television show set setting, then uh, I think that would have been more interesting to follow along with. But I mean, that's just a small gripe because if you haven't seen all those trailers and you're only going in uh, really not knowing too much of anything, I think this is a charming show. I think it's really a, a fun show. I think it's worthwhile to check it out. If you have Disney+, Plus. Do I think it's worth the price of the subscription? If you are going to be following along with Loki and the other Marvel shows that are coming along, if you want to watch the old Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, then uh, I think it's definitely worth it to get Disney Plus if you don't already have it. Uh, yeah, it's a tricky thing because the show is so great. I'm wondering how much longer it can maintain the balance of keeping our characters in the dark and not knowing what's going on and uh, having to reveal everything. So that's my review, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope you are uh, having a good day out there. And if you're just playing it in the background while you're working or commuting, commuting, then uh, I hope it did bring a little bit of entertainment to your day. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next video.